I'm about to watch and react to Freaky Eaters. Hate the name of the show, but let's check out if there's any nutritional value in it. Be whoop. 20 year old Amy is addicted to cola. She drinks on average 30 cans of cola all day, every single day. Wow, 30 cans. What is it, 12 ounces per can? 30 times 12 is 360 ounces. The two liter is 64 ounces. That's basically five of those. She drinks five two liters a day. Holy moly. First problem right off the bat, tremendous amount of added sugars in each one of these cans. If I was to show you before I pop up the image here, how much actual sugar is added to each one of these cans, it will blow your mind. Take a look. The most I had probably in a day is 50 cans. I'm always drinking cola. Also not good for your teeth and not good for a lot of body parts. Also, what else is in cola? Caffeine. That's a ton of caffeine, especially if you're taking at night. There's no way you're getting restful sleep on that much caffeine. I do get tired a lot. I don't have that much energy. Cause you're not sleeping well. We said that right off the bat. You're having too much caffeine, too close to bedtime. And then on top of it, every time you drink a sugar, it's uh, sugar, basically. Every time you drink a cola, your sugar spikes, your insulin spikes, you get a little crash. Recently, Amy had a serious health scare when she discovered a lump in her chest, which her doctor suggested might be due to excess caffeine. I think that you drink too much caffeine and that is why you have the tumor. Hold up. None of that makes sense to me. I think specifically with caffeine, we've seen studies that show both a protective effect on breast cancer. Small, rare studies show that there's no change in breast density uh, for premenopausal women like herself. So like, I don't, I don't buy that that tumor or mass was caused by caffeine itself. I've just never heard of a case like that. Could have contributed due to an unhealthy lifestyle? Yes. But due to? Due to? No. Wow, that's a lot of gala. <laughs> that's a lot of sugar. Wow. 950 pounds of sugar is what you get in your cola each year. I don't think that's understandable to the human mind, but they love it for the dramatic effect so they could stand in the backyard and be like, whoa. What we see right here is you're already a pre-diabetic. Okay, if this is a fasting blood sugar, the glucose range puts her in their pre-diabetic range at being at 115. Also, I'm very, very surprised that her triglycerides are so low. Triglycerides is what you would expect to be high in a person who has uncontrolled or poorly controlled sugar or a high intake of sugar because the body stores sugar through triglycerides in the blood. But the pre-diabetic thing should scare her because while pre-diabetes doesn't mean diabetes, it is curable at that stage. Once you become a diabetic, you're diabetic for life. Your risk factors change. 24 year old Michael lives on meat. He averages up to 150 pounds monthly. That's equivalent to an astounding 1,800 pounds a year. The real problem with overeating meat is your overexposure to saturated fats. If you're eating a hot dog, you're also consuming a lot of carbs. Not only are you overeating carbohydrates that have been bleached, therefore rapidly converted to glucose and then rapidly stored as fat if you don't eat it, you're also consuming saturated fat. So all of that ends up raising your bad cholesterol numbers, your triglycerides, puts you at increased risk for heart disease, stroke, anything with cardiovascular. Uh, conditions. In one day, Michael can put away as much as five quarter pound hot dogs, a rack of ribs, two steaks, and up to 30 chicken wings. Red meat is a maybe carcinogen. Like it's still not all the way there. It's like suspected, but the ones that are suspected are the processed meats like the hot dogs, like the chicken wings. So you want to avoid those and eat those, like almost get rid of them totally. But occasionally if you're going to a football game and you have a wing, to me, I think that's a reasonable balance. I'm a licensed psychotherapist specializing in eating disorders and addictive behaviors. JJ Virgin. I'm a certified nutrition specialist and a certified health and fitness specialist. This is a ridiculous amount of chicken wings. I don't like the confrontational nature right away. You, you can't come in to a healthcare encounter with that kind of attitude and hope for good outcomes. You're setting up the encounter for failure right from the start when you come in judgmental like that. So this would be dinner. Two and a half pounds of meat right here. Two and a half pounds of meat is a lot of meat. When we're talking about a portion of meat, it should be around six ounces really, like a fist amount. Ooh. That is one month worth of your meat consumption. Where is this? Where is this being filmed that they just jammed all of this meat in there? Outside of being a cool visual for TV, I don't know how this helps change his mind. Like if I'm him, I see it and go, okay, and? It looks good. You think yeah. this looks good? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like how do they think this would turn him off? We see this AAEPA ratio, which 
tells you the risk of heart disease. What is this that they're looking at? This is an anti-glidin immunology blood test that tells you whether or not you have antibodies to gluten. What does this tell him about his meat consumption? These are not the lab tests that I would show. The test I would show him is his LDL, his triglycerides are gonna be quite high. Having really elevated triglycerides puts you at a risk for pancreatitis, which could be a life-threatening condition requiring an ICU stay. You're 24 with high risk of heart disease. Yeah, what she was saying and what they were showing all make no sense. Her actual statement is fine. He is at higher risk, but not for the reasons that they just showed. <laughs> Victor lives on cheeseburgers and cheeseburgers alone. Oh no. I love burgers. He eats four burgers a day, 28 each week, which is nearly 1,500 burgers every single year. It's meant to be fast food, to be on the go every now and then, not to be something that is your primary meal. And if you develop type two diabetes because of the, the diet that you're following, one that is high in fat, high in sugar, what ends up happening is you have a high risk of stroke and heart attack, yes, but also high risk of developing problems in your eyes leading to blindness, peripheral neuropathy, where you feel pins and needles or even lose sensation in your fingers and toes. And that becomes such a problem that you might have a rock in your shoe that you don't even feel. And then it leads to a terrible infection that leads to an amputation. Like think about the cascade of events that was to happen just from overeating burgers your whole life. Again with the cool visuals. I could see them in the, in the producer's room. Let's get caught in some burgers and show them the truck and open them! Ah! 29 year old Eric of Cincinnati, Ohio is addicted to french fries. I eat basically just french fries. I, I, you can't. You can't grow up to be a functioning adult just eating potatoes and french fries. Like, you need vitamin D. Rickets is a legitimate concern for people who don't eat or consume enough vitamin D. Calcium. I'm very active. I skateboard once a week, if not twice. Because of his athletic lifestyle, Eric hasn't become overweight and doesn't think french fries are damaging his health. The way you look and the way that your body's functioning is not the same thing. My cholesterol video that I made talking about my blood test results, I was losing weight because I wasn't eating a lot of calories, but the quality of the foods that I was consuming was leading for my cholesterol to creep up, go real high, and therefore put me at a higher risk for having a, a stroke or heart attack. I may have looked great, my abs may have been coming in, but that didn't mean I was healthy. Weight is an important factor of someone's health, but it's not the sole determinant of someone's health status. Eric needs a dose of shock therapy to really come Oh yeah, that's what he needs, shock therapy. French fries, starch, salt, fat. This is the worst type of fat that you can possibly eat. It's trans fat. Yeah, trans fat is a big problem. And in some countries and parts of actually the United States have outlawed or reduced the amount of trans fats that can be in foods. Initially, trans fat was added to our foods in the 90s, but then we realized that it truly does spike your LDL, your bad cholesterol, and lower your HDL, your good cholesterol. So it's like a doubly negative effect on your health. And we saw rates of heart disease just absolutely skyrocket. Now, that being said, very important point here, just because something says no trans fat on it doesn't mean it's a healthy meal. We wanted to show him the amount of French We need to show him! Show him the fries! Get the boxes of the fries! Forklift! Truck! This is LDL cholesterol. It's the worst kind. And that's what this elevated number is right here. LDL being 110 is slightly elevated for him. So it's not even that high. But a 110 is not nearly something that is scary. Very surprised. These blood work results are very suspicious to me. That he doesn't just eat french fries or he's a very unique anomaly. Daniel has been obsessed with raw meat for the past six years. He feeds his habit four times a week in pound after pound of raw beef, eating whole steaks pulled right from the packaging. Mm. If you look at cultures like the Inuit, they were quite healthy and they ate primarily raw meats. They didn't even eat that many vegetables because they didn't have it. They lived in the, in the Arctic, in the tundra. But what they did eat was the entire animal. So they got fiber from the parts of the animals that we no longer eat. So there's a lot of problems when people try and look at what other cultures do without fully understanding exactly what they do and how they do it even raw chicken. Can somebody say salmonella? I have never gotten sick from eating raw meat, ever. 
And I've been doing it for six years now. It just takes one time to get really sick, to get ICU hospitalized, to potentially get a colitis so bad that you need a colon resection and then need to wear a colostomy bag to realize that, wow, I probably shouldn't have been doing that. I'm, as a doctor, can't tell this person what to do, nor should I tell this person what to do, nor should I judge what this person is doing. But what I could do is tell them the risks of what I just said and then see if, like, are those risks acceptable to you? And if so, why? And if the person is cognizant and they can understand and accept those risks, that's it. Uh, you do have a parasite. So this looks like they gave him an ova and parasite test of his uh, stool sample. And they saw that there's a parasite, but they didn't do a taxonomy, so they don't know what kind of parasite it is. And it very clearly states there that there's no treatment that's even necessary if the patient doesn't have symptoms or other inflammatory markers. That's an important note there. Something else I want to point out is if you eat undercooked meats quite often, you put yourself at a risk of developing a tapeworm. Undercooked pork can uh, lead to a cyst forming parasite that can actually lay cysts in your brain. You're risking all these things for no real benefit. Like just cook your meat somewhat. One more thing that's of interest on this test, rotting protein that hasn't digested sitting in your gut. They need to stop ordering these at these tests that mean absolutely nothing. Like this show is so ridiculous, my God. I've actually went vegan and keto before. Click here to check out those videos and learn about those diets. And as always, stay happy and healthy. Which one are you clicking on?